Oh, holy night, a weary world rejoices. Uh, welcome to our Christmas Eve service here at Burnside City Uniting Church. Uh, it's great to have you along. My name is Benji. I'm one of the pastors here. This is a, a really special Christmas Eve service for us. Uh, so uh, we're going to be having uh, a, so the kids play. There's going to be some wonderful music. Uh, there's going to be Ashley talking a, a craft to do and uh, a, a blessing from a whole lot of people from Burnside City uh, from their place to your place. So this is from our Christmas tree to your Christmas tree. I don't know where you are, where you're gathered around. Maybe you've got some candles lit. Uh, maybe you've got some presents already under the tree and you're a bit excited about, about Christmas coming tomorrow. These are candles that we light at Advent time. Uh, I don't know if you can remember what they're for. We have candle for peace, for hope, for love and for joy. And tomorrow we get to light the central candle here for, for Jesus Christ, the light of the world in our darkness. That's uh, so wonderful. So I, I'm excited. I hope you have a bit of anticipation too. Uh, and maybe this is not uh, an easy time for you at Christmas time. Uh, but I, I still hope that, that you will experience the, the joy of Jesus being in our lives, that, uh, that Jesus transforms the way we think about family, uh, that there, there is more to family than just your blood relatives. There's, there's the people of the church. There's the brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, there's some beautiful words here in Titus uh, that Paul wrote. Titus 3, uh, chapter 3, and it says this, uh, verse 4, But when the kindness and love of God our Saviour appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by his Holy Spirit, who he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. Rebirth and renewal. I hope that at this Christmas time we can experience that rebirth and renewal uh, that comes thanks to Jesus. Enjoy the service.
This reading comes from, it's a Christmas story, and it comes from Luke 2, from verse 4 through to 20. So here we go. So Joseph left Nazareth, a town in Galilee. He went to the town of Bethlehem in Judea. This town was known as the town of David. Joseph went there because he was from the family of David. Joseph registered with Mary because she was engaged to marry him. Mary was now pregnant. While Joseph and Mary were in Bethlehem, the time came for her to have the baby, and she gave birth to her first son. There were no rooms left in the inn, so she wrapped the baby in cloths and laid him in a box where animals are fed. Now that night, some shepherds were in the fields nearby watching their sheep. And an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord was shining around them, and suddenly they became very frightened. The angel said, don't be afraid because I'm bringing you some good news. It will be a joy to all the people. Today, your saviour was born in David's town. He is Christ the Lord. This is how you will know him. You will find him, or you'll find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a feeding box. Then a very large group of angels from heaven joined the first angel and all the angels were praising God saying, Give glory to God in the heaven and on earth let there be peace to the people who please God. Then the angels left the shepherds and went back to heaven. The shepherds said to each other, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened. We will see this thing the Lord told us about. So the shepherds went quickly and found Mary and Joseph. And the shepherds saw the baby lying in the feeding box. Then they told then they told what the angels had said about this child. Everyone was amazed when they heard what the shepherds said to them. Mary hid these things in her heart. She continued to think about them. Then the shepherds went back to their sheep, praising God and thanking him for everything that they had seen and heard. It was just as the angel had told them.
there was nothing the innkeeper liked more than a good night's sleep. But that night, there was a knock at the door. No room. Please, sir, we have traveled through day and night and we are very tired. There's only a stable around the back. Here's two blankets. Sign the register. So they signed it, Mary and Joseph. <laughs> then the innkeeper shut the door, climbed the stairs, got into bed, and went to sleep. But then there was another knock at the door. me. I wonder if you could lend us another smaller blanket. There, one small blanket. Bye-bye. Then he shut the door, climbed the stairs, got into bed, and went to sleep. shut the curtains, got into bed, and went to sleep. But then there was another knock at the door. <laughs> we are the shepherds. We've come to see Mary and Joseph. Round the back! Then he shut the door, climbed the stairs, got back into bed, and went to sleep. But then there was another knock at the door. Kings. We've come round the back. He slammed the door, climbed the stairs, got back into bed, and went to sleep. But then there was a chorus of singing that woke him up. the door, went round the back, stormed into the stable, and was just about to speak when... You awake the baby. A baby? Yes, a baby has been born. What? Then, just at that moment, amazingly, his anger seemed to fly away. Aww, isn't he lovely? In fact, he thought he was so special that he woke all the guests so they could see the baby too. So 
and no one <laughs> got much sleep that night. Do you like stars? I love stars. We see a lot of stars around at Christmas time, don't we? I've been busy making a variety of different stars, ready to add a little burst of joy to our Christmas table. I've made a table center to go on our Christmas table. I've made double star napkins to go on our plates and to in our cups. And I've made some star Christmas star burst decorations, some Christmas stars to go on our table and on our tree. And I'm hoping that tonight I can get some more of these little bursty stars made. And my hope is that these little stars will make my family and my friends smile when they see them. But it still looks like I've got quite a bit of work to do tonight. So I hope that you don't mind but I might keep making while I talk to you. Is that okay? 
Have you ever wondered why there are lots of stars on display at Christmas? Did you know that a very special star appeared at the very first Christmas? It's called the Star of Bethlehem or the Christmas Star. Tonight we are preparing for the celebration of the birth of Jesus, the beautiful baby boy that God gave as a precious gift to Mary and Joseph. This precious gift was so very special that God didn't want Mary and Joseph to keep him a secret. God wanted everyone to know. Back then, one of the most important groups of people were the Magi, or the wise men. God really wanted these wise men to meet baby Jesus, so God placed an extremely bright shining star in the sky, and these wise men followed that star all the way to Bethlehem. They were really excited to meet Jesus and offered him lots of presents and then they worshipped him knowing that he was a very special gift from God. Who would have thought that following a star would have such an impact on the rest of their lives and ours? So stars at Christmas help to burst out the joy of such a special event and keep reminding us every time that we see a star of God's special gift that was given for us. Do you have any stars in your home tonight or where you are right now? Would you like to make some of these stars that I've made? After this service finishes, there will be some short demonstration clips that you can watch on our BCUC YouTube channel. There will be links on our BCUC website and also some paper instructions that you will be able to print out and make at home. Would you say this prayer with me? Are you ready? Thank you God for making the stars. Thank you for the way that stars sparkle and shine, bursting forth with joy, hope and new life. Thank you, God, for making the special Christmas star. Thank you that we can be reminded every year of this special birth. Thank you, God, that every night we can be reminded of you. Amen. This Christmas Eve reminds us that we're getting near the end of a year, unlike we've ever gone through before. Some of us have had our hopes dashed. Many of us have had disappointments as the years gone by. So tonight, let me lead you in a prayer of hope, for hope, on this Christmas Eve. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, as we celebrate this season of your coming to us as our Saviour, born in a stable, the hope this brings us thrills our whole being. The unshakable conviction that no matter what life brings us, we can still have hope because of that glorious night when you were born. This year has been so hard on so many of us, at times unbearable. The loss of a loved one who fought the fight against ill health so courageously. The unwanted divorce that left us wondering if anything in our lives had been real. The hurt of watching a child walk away from the truth of God's word. At times there seems to be no end to the painful circumstances we face in this life. But no matter the pain, we can always have the thrill of hope, the promise that you are for us and that you stand with us in every circumstance of life. We know how dearly you love us because you've given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with your love that pursues us relentlessly, that chases us down and fills every fibre of our being. Thank you for your love that gives so much more than we could ever understand. Help us in all of life's circumstances to rejoice in confident hope. Help us to always be patient in times of trouble. Help us to remember that you always have a plan that even in times of deafening silence, you are near. Let your hope penetrate our hearts as we remember your promises to us. We pray for those around us that you, the source of hope, will fill our friends and families completely with your joy and your peace. Give us faith to trust you in the most hopeless situations of our lives, in those times when it seems 
we should just throw in the towel and give up. Strengthen our faith as we seek to trust in you. Loving and accepting God, help us to never lose sight of who we are and who you say we are. Help us to hold with joy the blessings of being your children, of belonging to your family. And so, O Lord, where do we put our hope? Our hope is in you. Nowhere else, nothing else, you and you alone. Our hope in your loving and supportive presence gives us the ability to keep going, even as we face crushing circumstances that threaten to rob us of peace and joy in our daily lives. So now may you, our Lord Jesus Christ and God our Father, strengthen and guide us in every good thing we do and say. May we live each day of our lives filled with peace and joy and hope which the birth of our Saviour brings us. Help us always to be ready to share the hope we have as your followers and children in God's family. You are in us. You are for us. You are strengthening us in everything life throws at us. Praise and thanks be to you, our God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm so weary. It could be because I'm in my third trimester of pregnancy. It could be because I just brought a house with a staircase. It could be because it's Christmas time and there is so much going on. Every single day in my calendar seems to be booked up. I wonder why you're weary. Is it because you're constantly checking the flights and seeing if things have been cancelled? Wondering if you can visit your family these holidays. Maybe you're weary from the constant changes that we've had to go through this year. All the pivoting we've had to, to make. The changes we've had as a church. The changes we've had as community. Whether or not you're allowed to go out to coffee with your friends. Or whether or not you can visit your grandkids. Maybe you're just weary from this year. But there are other things that make us weary too. Maybe you're weary of turning on the news and seeing such negative things going on in our world. Bushfires, politics, uh, oppression of the poor and brokenhearted. I'm weary. Are you? And then Christmas. And we start playing our Christmas carols and we start putting up our Christmas tree and wrapping presents. And then O oh, Holy Night comes on and we sing the song, A Weary World Rejoices. And I can't help but think, really? A weary world rejoicing? I don't have the energy to celebrate anymore at this time of year. I'm exhausted. What about you? What do you think of when you hear the words, a weary world rejoices? I can't help but think, it better be something significant. It better be something really worth rejoicing because I'm tired. In the passage that we read out, in the book of Luke, chapter 2, we see the shepherds rejoicing. And I can imagine that they were weary. It said that they tended the flock at night. They slept with the sheep. These are not conducive environments to a good night's sleep, to being well rested. I imagine the shepherds were weary. But this is what was read. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. When they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning the child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. 
the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. The shepherds rejoiced. They glorified and they praised God. Was it because something big had happened? Was it because they no longer had to sleep with the sheep at night? Was it because from that moment on, everything had changed for them? Well, when I read the scripture, all I see is that they had seen a baby. Seen a baby in a manger. And these weary shepherds rejoiced. You see, nothing in that moment changed for them in this situation. But they knew that everything was going to be different. That from that moment on, even though they still had to sleep with their flock at night, even though their immediate situation hadn't changed, they knew that everything was going to change. For the Messiah had come. When I think about the shepherds and what they must have felt, I kind of think about, uh, this might seem a little odd, but the sports draft. Now, if you follow the NBA and you're a Pelicans fan, I imagine you would have felt this same uh, hope and excitement. You see, the Pelicans haven't been a very good basketball team for a while. (laughs) Their fans are weary. But then, a couple of years ago, they drafted Zion Williams. What a thrill of hope for the fans of the New Orleans Pelicans. Now, were the Pelicans all of a sudden number one team, the best team? Out? No, that's still the Golden State Warriors. <laughs> but they knew that from this moment on, everything was going to be different. They had a star. Maybe you don't follow the NBA, NBA at all and that's okay. Maybe you're an Adelaide Crows fan. Maybe you experienced this same thrill of hope when we got the number one draft pick this year. Our team hasn't been good for a couple of years, we'll admit. (laughs) And it might not be for a little bit longer. But maybe you experienced this same thrill at hope that from this moment on, everything was going to be different. We got the number one draft pick. We still weren't the best, (laughs) but things were definitely going to change. You see, I think some of us, we're waiting for that end game. We're waiting for restoration to happen. We're waiting for our team to be winning championships. We're waiting for everything to be better, for our lives to get back on track before we hope, before we are willing to let ourselves be hopeful. Maybe you're waiting until COVID's over before you come back to church. Maybe you're waiting until your, your kids are grown up and everything's easier in your household before you start loving your neighbour. Maybe you're waiting for just everything to be calm in your life. But you see, hope doesn't come in the restoration. Hope comes in the sign and promise of You see, just like the shepherds when the angels came to them and the angels said, you, this is the sign that hope has come. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. In baby Jesus, hope has come. A new day has begun. So a weary world rejoices. What a thrill of hope. When I hear these words, I think of another passage. Matthew chapter 11. In the words of Jesus, no longer a baby in a manger, but a man, probably in his 30s with some facial hair. And he says, come to me, all who are weary and heavy burdened. I will give you rest. Jesus is inviting us in our weariness into a rest with him. 
You see, this rest that Jesus is inviting us into is a rest that is greater than a good night's sleep can give us. It is a rest that is greater than clearing out our cupboards and minimalizing our wardrobe will provide us. It is a rest from no longer having to strive for the things in this world to find our value, but is a rest that comes knowing that God, the creator of the world, loves us no matter what we've done, no matter where we're at, no matter how weary we feel. Come to me and I will give you this rest, he says. He does not say rest and when you're ready, I'm here. He says, come to me and you will have everything you need. So come this Christmas. Experience the thrill of hope in the promise that Jesus has come. Let us hope. For yonder breaks in our future, in your very near future, a new and glorious morning is arising. A new life, a new day for you tonight. Praise be to God our Saviour King. Merry Christmas. O oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Saviour's birth. Long lay the world in sin and terror Appeared and the soul felt its worth. The thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. Yonder breaks a new and glorious morn.
what a great service this has been so far. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I know I'm really enjoying it. Uh, we've just got one more song to sing and uh, then we have the, the blessing from the, the people of Burnside to you. At this point, you know, I would ask you to, uh, if this is, if this is uh, been helpful for you, this is helpful for you at, at the end of this year that's inspired you a little bit more, given you hope that's, that you need at this time of year. What do you think about passing this service on? Just flicking it on to someone else uh, so that they might watch it and, and it, what you've enjoyed, they can enjoy too. I, I want to at this point say also thank you to so many people who've been involved in making this service uh, work. Uh, lots of people behind the scenes and in front of the camera too that you've seen. Uh, too many to, to name, uh, but thank you also for some of what you've done. So as we uh, get to the end of this, I, I just pray that a, a, fresh, a fresh renewal will happen for you at uh, this Christmas time. Thank you for joining us. Oh, one more thing. Sorry. <laughs> one more thing. Christmas tomorrow, if you want to come here, uh, you can still book online and uh, you'll see whether those bookings are, are booked out or not. Uh, you can book online on our website, uh, Burnside City Uniting Church, and uh, there's a 9 o'clock service and a 10.30 service. And then we have our normal services throughout January. But this Sunday, just straight after Christmas, uh, there's only an online service. There's no in-person service. So you can be wherever you are on holidays, doing the puzzles or whatever you want to do, and still enjoy worship here at Burnside City. Thanks for joining us.
into his kingdom will be no end. And to his kingdom will be no Make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen.